One thing you need to know about are the operators used in the regular expressions, and there are a lot of them. The documentation for the pattern class is very good about explaining the expression characters. Let me show you. Here are the basic character matches. Most characters are a literal match, as shown at the top of this list, but some need to be escaped so their meaning is clear. The backslash character is the escape character, and to enter a literal backslash character, it has to be used to escape itself. The other escape sequences shown here are to create some special characters that you don't have keys for. Square brackets around any group of characters means that any character in the group will be considered a match for the entire group. And you can use the hyphen to specify a range of characters to include. If the first character of the group is a tilde, then any character except ones in the group will be considered to be a match. Of the set of predefined characters, I find I use the period most often. It will consider any character to be a match. The others match any character in a set, such as digits or letters. This is a group that matches only the ASCII set of characters. All the others will match Unicode characters, which means that they'll match any character from any alphabet in the world. You won't need to use this one unless you have characters from other alphabets mixed in with your ASCII. The character class is a wrapper for characters. It has some methods that you can use to test a character for being of a certain type. And that's what this set does. It uses the methods of the character class to perform the test. This group can be used to match the beginning and ending of things. Matching the beginning or ending of a line seems to be common, but being able to locate the beginning and ending of a word is also pretty handy. These are the greedy modifiers. You can follow any character or escape sequence with a modifier that specifies the number of times that it must or may match. The default is just the one match. Here you see the reluctant modifiers. These you can use on the previous modifiers, and the question mark modifier will apply to the match made according to the rules of the first modifier. The question mark means once or not at all. This is a good area for experimentation to figure out exactly what will be matched. Here is another area that would probably need some experimentation. The plus sign means one or more times, and it can be used as shown here to modify the previous match. This is getting into some of the more advanced operations. There are two Boolean expressions, AND and OR, and surrounding something in parentheses makes it into a capture group. The capture groups are numbered starting with 1 from the left. The entire expression is capture group 0. You can refer to a capture group by number, and it's sort of like a ditto. It requires that the same match be made again as a back reference. If you escape a character, and that escaping doesn't give the character some special meaning, it just becomes itself. You use this, for example, if you want to include as a literal a square bracket or a parentheses. Such characters will otherwise take on a special meaning. You can use the Q and E escape sequences to quote an entire sequence of characters. It makes them literal no matter what characters they are. This non-capturing group is a bit special. Usually, when a match is made, the matched region is captured, so it can be replaced or removed or whatever. A non-capturing action locates the text with a match, but doesn't consider that text to be part of the match for the sake of the capture. The simple matches are easy to master, but the more advanced ones will take a bit of practice. This is one of the areas that requires some experimentation. No matter how much I show you, it will only be a start, and it will only make sense when you actually work with it. You can use the sample program that I supplied as your starting point, and you can let it grow out from there.